Looking for an Android image for your next Raspberry Pi project? If yes, keep watching this video as I show you how to install and explore Emteria OS. It's an Android based operating system that you can try on your Raspberry Pi. I'll walk you through the installation process, share my experience with the free version and see how it runs on the Pi. So let's get started. Ok, the first thing that you have to do is to open the Raspberry Pi Imager and then choose your Raspberry Pi device. In this case, I have the Raspberry Pi 4. Now if you have the other versions of Raspberry Pi, you can choose your device and see if the software is available for that version. After that, you have to choose the operating system, go down and choose this option. And once you are there, all you have to do now is to click on it. From there, we can see Android by Mteria and we want to click on it. As you can see, once I click on Android by Mteria, I have two options as of this video the Android 13 and Android 14. The Android that I want to choose is Android 14, so I'm just going to click on it. As you can see, it says SD card only, so I'm assuming I have to use an SD card, so in this case, I'm using a 32GB SD card for this OS. And lastly, as you can see, the size of it to download this is 1GB, so after I click on next, it will be downloaded and it will be written on the SD card. So now I have to choose the SD card, I'm going to choose my SD card and all I have to do now is to click on next. And once I click on next, as you can see there is this message, it's saying that once I click yes, it will delete everything on the SD card and start downloading and writing the OS on it. Now depending on your network connection, it will take some time to download and write the OS on the SD card, for me it took around 15 minutes. While I was waiting for Raspberry Pi Imager to write the OS, I noticed that Mteria offers a free starter plan. To get started, I had to sign up, so I went to their website, created a free account and signed up for the starter plan. It was pretty simple and it didn't take much time. Before we move on, if you're enjoying this video or you're interested in Raspberry Pi projects, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Once the Imager finishes downloading and writing the OS, it will start verifying the process. After it's done, you can safely remove the SD card from your PC, insert it into your Raspberry Pi and connect it to your keyboard, mouse and monitor or touch a screen. Then power it on so we can go through the first time setup. After I powered up the Raspberry Pi, it booted without any problems and I was guided through the first time setup. The first step was selecting the language. It displayed a list of options and I simply choose the one that I preferred which is English United States. The interface was clean and it took me a few seconds to proceed. After that, I had the option to set the date and time. It automatically detected some settings, but I had the option to adjust them if needed, which in this case, I adjusted them manually. Setting it correctly ensures that the apps and online services work without any issues and I really recommend taking a few seconds and doing this correctly, which I did in this case. Moving on, I came across the Wi-Fi setup since I had connected my Raspberry Pi to the internet using the Ethernet cable, I didn't need to configure the Wi-Fi. But if you're using Wi-Fi, this step is important to get the device online. A stable internet connection is necessary because the next step involves the device activation. Lastly, I moved to the device activation. This was simple process. I just needed to enter the email and password that I already created on the Mteria website. Once I logged in, the activation completed quickly and the device was ready to go. I really liked how quick and straightforward the activation process was. After that, I had to go through a few more steps like accepting the terms and conditions and some additional setup options. Once that was done, the device needed a restart. To keep this video short, I decided to skip that part. After the restart, we can see Android successfully running on the Raspberry Pi. At the end, having Android running on Raspberry Pi is honestly pretty amazing. It's really good to see a lightweight Android version that works smoothly on a small affordable device like this one. It opens up so many possibilities. As you can see right here, the Android is totally usable and okay. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment. If you found this video helpful or if you're interested in more Raspberry Pi projects, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Your support really helps out and motivates me to create more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.